What's up guys, Drew here, Johnny here, and we're here today with a brand new video, the ultimate piercing aftercare step-by-step -step guide. Before we begin, please make sure to subscribe, turn on those post notifications, be notified every single time we post. Yo, this one is detailed. Yeah, detailed. I'm not, I was just gonna say deep. Okay, deep, deep and detailed. Deep and detailed. And very scientific. Yes, science. Let's begin. Step number one, Ugh. or step number one. Question number one. What is a piercing on a scientific level? Well, Sally, a piercing is... Sally? Well, Johnny. Piercing is an intentional wound made that is meant to heal with a foreign object, aka your jewelry, inside your body. So it's, a, it's an intentional wound with a piece of something in there. There are three stages to a healing process. Stage one is... Inflamed stage. Let's talk science. Okay, so in the first few days, blood clotting occurs in the body and also platelets, which are the cells that circulate within our blood and bind together when they recognize damaged blood vessels. It's like a, a fighting thing in our blood cells. And plasma infiltrate the wound to achieve hemostasis, which is a stoppage of blood. Long story short, for the first few days, the body tries to stop the bleeding from the piercing. Stage number two. Growth. So stage two is the growing process. This is where the skin starts to grow from the piercing inward to create a seal tight channel. It's like seal kind of thing, you know? Oh, yeah. uh, when that happens, it is called this crazy word called epithelization. Epithelization. Science. Science. I don't believe in God, I believe in science. Which this means is the body is trying to heal the skin around your new jewelry so nothing gets in. But new skin is also delicate and still can be torn quite easily. Usually we call this stage crusties. So this is a stage when people come in and they're complaining that their piercing hasn't been healed yet and it's been a couple of months. That's because your skin's so delicate and a slight touch of the piercing, a slight hit, a snag, a pull, whatever it is, can reopen this thin seal and blood starts coming in, so it starts uh, getting swollen again, and other bodily fluids fill up, and then you have a problem. You're pretty much going from stage two back to stage one kind of thing. Once you have passed this healing stage, it is considered your piercing to be healed. Yay! Yeah. Woo! Healed piercing. Well, usually, what's like the time frame for this to usually happen? I would General. say, I would say, I would say from the second week all the way till like your third to fourth month-ish somewhere around that stage. Stage three is the matured stage. All right, so for the matured stage, it usually takes months to years for your piercing to be healed. So it usually cycles between stages two and three throughout the healing process. What this means is your body's trying to heal itself. So please be patient. The body's doing everything it can to be up to date and to heal that piercing or the open wound in your body. So patience, please, patience. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh. Alrighty, let's answer some let's ask some questions to Johnny right over here. So Johnny, how long does it take for your piercings to heal? Well, Harut, it varies on the body, from person to person, from bygone to bygone, from human to human. Lobes are the quickest piercing to heal because it's soft tissue and it's pretty much made of just soft skin. Anything on the cartilage area or cartilageless area, just kidding, I made up that word. I knew the word cartilageous. Should cartilageless. Anything on the cartilage area usually could take anywhere from six to eight to nine months. It depends on you, it depends on your body, it depends on many, 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 many things we'll get into a little bit later. But yes, you're looking at the six to nine month mark. So that's anything, not your earlobe. All that, all that, all this. Science. What's normal to see or experience in your new piercing? Well, things that are normal to see and experience is tenderness, swelling, and of course, some discomfort. It's fresh, it's new, it's gonna be tender, it's, it is gonna swell, and you're gonna experience some discomfort. What you can also experience is a bodily fluids or discharge, like pus Ew. that are white or transparent fluid, or even dried pus or discharge, like we call crusties. Ew, gross. Those are some stuff you can experience throughout these stages, pretty normal, nothing too crazy. Also redness. Yes. Redness is very common. Don't freak out though. Another question you may be asking is, how do I know this piercing has been healed? Another question you may be asking is, how do I know this piercing is healing or healed? Well, Harut, the way you know is, imagine your piercing before you got it done. Oh. So like, let's say you got your, this piercing, right? 
How does this side of your ear feel? It's normal, it doesn't hurt, I can move it. The skin color's good and there's no tenderness. It feels right, there's no bumps. So pretty much mimic your body part. So it's like if I had this pierce, then this side should match this side. A few things you can remember. No redness, no tenderness, no crust, no weird bumps. Uh, pretty much you want the piercing to feel the way it did before you got a piercing or compare it to the opposite side. For example, if you got this side pierced, look at how that side feels and look at the way it looks and just pretty much judge it based on that. How do you know if something is wrong with your piercing? So going off what Johnny said, the complete opposite of it looking normal. So if you have trauma and or friction, they, these kind of issues that arise with piercings can cause complications, irritations, delayed healing process, and of course, excessive scarring, and even migration, or even worse, rejection. No. Now, you may ask you, well, what the hell is trauma? What is friction? I'll tell you what that is right now. This is trauma. This is friction. Now you'll be asking, I got the killing part. I got what to do. Now, what do I use to clean it? Well, Harut, one thing you can clean it with is a saline solution, but this saline solution must be in a can. You cannot make saline solution at home. I highly advise against it because saline solution in a can is made in a lab where it's sterile and safe. When you make it at home, it's not. Simple as that. So what you're gonna do is very simple. You're gonna take a spray can. You're either gonna spray directly into the piercing or onto the piercing, and then you're gonna pad dry it when you're done, or you can soak a Q-tip and gently dab the piercing itself, front and back, wherever it's located, and that's a very easy way to do it. Another option would be using antimicrobial soap. If it's at the stage where it has a lot of bacteria and it's almost borderline infection, it'd be a good time to use it, but I definitely recommend saline in the beginning, and if you're at a stage where you do need to use antimicrobial soap, Best thing to do is put a single drop of soap uh, in a Dixie cup. You wanna take a Q-tip, you wanna fill it all the way with water, give it a good mix, clean the area, and then wash off as soon as you're done. The water you wanna use is distilled water or USP water. If you can find any source, usually the SP water is like pharmaceutical water. grade Green. water. And there's gonna be a video coming soon of why you shouldn't make saline solution at home. I'm gonna do a lot of technicalities. Technicalities? and some stuff for gonna eye openers of like how disgusting it is when you make it at home. But anyways, thanks for the answer, Johnny. You're welcome. On a serious note, you guys wanna stay away from uh, any kind of essential oils when you have an open wound. A lot of people message us and ask us if we should clean our piercing with tea tree oil. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. Let me explain why. Uh, essential oils are very uh, potent, especially for an open wound. A piercing with an open wound Pretty much the early stages of a piercing, you do, do not use tea tree oil around it because it will irritate the crap out of that piercing. But here's a quick little bonus as well. What can they use tea tree oil for? Those pesky little piercing bumps. That's right, Johnny. But only at the stage where the wound has completely sealed. Pretty much stage two. You're looking at somewhere around the two to three month mark. Proper way, take a Q-tip, dab it, like, like some chicken wing on hot sauce, you know? Once you see the area has been pretty much covered with the tea tree oil, let it be for 15 minutes and then wash it off when you're done, and that's it. If you guys are looking for any kind of aftercare or tea tree oil, we do have it right now on lewisbody.com. Go and check it out. We do ship worldwide. Help support the channel. Go and cop that. You may be asking, okay, I know what to use on my piercings. What should I not use on my piercings? Bactine, alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, AND ointment, neosporin, bac bacotracin, betadine, so with ointments, what it does, it, it coats your piercing. It doesn't allow your piercing to breathe or even for it to even clean off the piercing like you use for like a saline. And with that as well, it also collects back here to the area as well. So definitely a no-no. So the science behind using a very harsh chemical on your piercing is your body is constantly building new cells to heal the piercing. So when using very harsh chemicals, it's killing off all the cells and, you're, and it. it's not being able to reproduce itself. Uh, with these products, again, they're, like we said, designed to kill everything, good and bad bacteria, uh, and they inhibit the growth of your cells, and they also uh, are not necessarily used for cleaning. You may be asking, can I speed up the healing process? No, you may not. There's no such solution <coughs> that, has, that, has anything, <coughs> that has anything to speed up the healing process. There's no, such, there's no such thing. What you can do to ensure your body heals properly or on time, because that's the only thing you can do, I don't think your body can speed up recovery. It can just heal appropriately at an appropriate time. Eat healthy meals every day. Exercise. Stay hydrated. That's active, right? Yeah. Take your multivitamins and supplements. Stay away from drugs and, and alcohol. alcohol. There's, no there's no such thing as a solution that I can spray 
or put on that it's gonna heal out faster, it's impossible. Nope. We're not the technology for that yet, folks. We're not there as a pharmaceutical, whatever science is at currently. Anyways, hope you guys find this video educational and informal in fact as well. I recommend you guys not only watch this video once, but continue rewatching again because your mind will absorb it And more. there will be a blog for this in the future. Yes, it will be. So losebodyjew.com will have a blog section where these blogs are gonna be posted for you guys. So you go do a nice quick read as well as watch the video. I kind of go ahead and I like read it and listen to the video. Yes, as sir. As you go. If you're already subscribed, please make sure to subscribe below. Turn on this post notification to be notified every single time we post. And of course, if you want some aftercare, soap, sprays, tea tree oil, or even jewelry. Whatever you need. Losebodyjewelry.com. Go get it. We do ship worldwide. Help support the channel. Go and check it out. We love you guys. We'll see you guys in your next Help time. us take over the world. Bye.